<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and here we're back over at the Xbox, the newer system. This is not the Xbox 360 that I know and love and have shown a lot on here. This is actually a follow-up to the last episode of Mod Chat, or the most recent one I did at the time of recording this, where I had talked about a Xbox One and Xbox Series kernel exploit coming out. Well, I showed in that episode what you would need to know about it, what you need to download, where you would need to set everything up, and how to set up your Xbox and take it offline if you had a Xbox One or Xbox Series console that you wanted to play around with this in the future. I did mention that there was a script on here that you could use with recommended to use a rubber ducky. However, we're actually going to be taking a look at that here. I will warn you right now that there's really not all too much to it, but what we're going to see is pretty leaked, quite literally. Um, I, I mean, if you want a spoiler to the video here, uh, you're going to get 1337 as the output, but if you actually want to see the process, it is interesting to see here. So you will need a few things if you want to check this out yourself. I would recommend watching the previous episode of Mod Chat, which I'll have linked down below in the description because it essentially goes over this news recap for the system OS kernel exploit on the Xbox One and Xbox series. It goes through all these steps here, one through five of getting set up, However, like I said, I did not go over step six, but that's what we're going to be doing right here. And before we get into this here, I do want to give a huge shout out and thank you not only for the information, but also some of the time that my friend Dr. Boomhauer had given to this cause here. You see, he ended up getting this script running that we're going to be using on a Raspberry Pi Pico and put out the instructions. And when I ran into some difficulty, I was able to ask him about it and he was able to assist. So a big shout out and thank you to you, dude. You're a pretty awesome friend and your help here was definitely appreciated in order to make this video here possible. Now, in order to get this all working, like I said, you are going to need your Xbox One, Xbox One S, Xbox One X, Xbox Series S, or Xbox Series X, which is on an exploitable firmware and has the game script application already set up and installed on it. I have covered all the prerequisites with that in that episode of Mod Chat, so if you want to check that out, you can do so. I'd also recommend having a keyboard on hand for this, just in case, a USB keyboard, and we're going to need some extra hardware for this. For this, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi Pico, or if you want to use a Raspberry Pi Pico W, up to you, but as long as you use one of those, it should be okay. You can use any other type of rubber ducky setup on here, it's going to be completely up to you, but for this here, I'm going to be showing you all specifically using a Raspberry Pi Pico. So of course, you're also going to need a cable to hook up the Pico, not only to your computer, but then also hook it up to your console. The software that we're going to be installing and using on the Pico itself is going to be Pico Ducky. So for this here, there is a great set of instructions on here. I was able to follow them with little to no issue on this, but if you just want to follow along with this here, you should be able to as well. In order to get this downloaded, you'll need to go over to the releases page over on GitHub, come over here and download the latest build available. Now, the one I end up grabbing was just the latest Pico Ducky US version. And if you're wanting to get any of these other ones, I mean, your mileage may vary on here, but there's one on Mac. The other ones that are on Windows, for example, here, uh, they're just going to be in other languages. So I'm going to be using the one in English, but that's just going to be the one that is annotated with US. Just download the zip and save it somewhere you can easily find it. And we're also going to need this script from Carrot Cake. Now this is the GSPOC script right here. Uh, and this is the original text. So like I said, if you're wanting to follow along with your own type of rubber ducky, you can. And this is the raw text that you can copy and paste or even just download it as a zip. However, if you're going to be using Pico Ducky, you do need this in a proper format. So what you can do is come down here and there was actually a really awesome person if you come into the comments who ended up adapting this here down here CAD Indy they ended up adapting this to work on here. So what you can do is quite literally copy and paste this out and I'll show you what to do. So in order to do this you just need to grab this grab all of the comment here it's about 500 lines or so and once you get all this code go all the way down to enter right click and copy it out. Use your favorite text editor. I personally use Notepad++. Right click and paste it in here. And again, to make sure you have all of it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the delay 1000 up at the top. 
Then at the bottom, you make sure you have that final enter with the print console shellcode return value. And again, this is going to be important for what we're doing here. Then you're going to want to save this out as a payload.dd file. So quite literally, when you save this out, it's going to save by default as a text, but you're going to want to change it to all types and you want to call it payload.dd. And then you can save this and that should be it. So the software we should have here is going to be the payload itself as well as Pico Ducky. For Pico Ducky, you'll just want to right click and extract this into its own Pico Ducky folder. Now, inside of the Pico Ducky folder, you should have a series of files and such like this. Uh, the first ones, just to avoid some confusion, we can get rid of the payload 1, 2, 3, and 4 DD files. So you can quite literally just delete those because we're not going to need them. But everything else we will need. Now, at this point, you will need to hook up your Raspberry Pi Pico or Raspberry Pi Pico W, but you must boot it up into bootloader mode. So if you look on the Raspberry Pi Pico, there should only be one button on there that says boot cell. What you want to do is hold down that button and then while you're holding it down, connect it via USB to your computer. Once your Pi Pico is in bootloader mode, it should show up like a USB device like this called RPI RP2. Double click inside of here and there should only be these two files. Now you need to copy over the firmware to make this work. Go to the Pico Ducky folder and find your firmware files. They're going to be the UF2 files. Now, this depends entirely on which device you have. If you have a standard Pico, grab the Pico firmware. If you have a Pico W, grab the Pico W firmware. Since I have a standard Pico, I'm just going to grab this firmware right here. You can right click, copy this out, go to your USB drive into the root of it, and paste it inside of here. Give this a few seconds, it's going to copy over, then it's going to automatically disconnect and close the window here once this is complete. And there we go, that is done. Now keep your USB drive connected because it should reconnect itself automatically. We're going to open this back up here, and as you can see, it's now showing up as a extremely small USB drive. You need to go to the USB drive itself, and there should only be a boot out text file. If there isn't, you don't have to worry too much about it, but this is how mine looked by default. Now, in order to get this all up and running, you just have to copy the rest of the files. So grab the lib directory and grab all of the .py files. Just grab them all right here, right click, copy, go over to your USB drive, right click, and paste this to the root of your USB drive. And here we go. Once that's all copied over, the last thing we need is the payload. So you can grab wherever you've copied over the payload and make sure it is payload.dd. Right click, copy this out, right click, and paste this to the root of the USB drive. And once it has been all set up, we can come out here, right click, and eject the USB drive. Now check this out. If you want to test this and make sure your rubber ducky is working, you can do this here. Open up something such as Notepad and focus your cursor right here. And while it is focused, plug your Raspberry Pi Pico back into your computer without holding down the button. Just plug it in like a standard drive and wait. And there we go. If it is successful, it's going to start automatically printing out your code like this, which means the rubber ducky is working successfully. So now I'm going to go ahead and physically disconnect the drive. And there we go. It stopped typing just because I disconnected it. So now with your rubber ducky all set up, we can close out of here and go over to your Xbox One or Xbox Series console with your Raspberry Pi Pico, a cable to hook it up. And like I said, I'd also recommend keeping a USB keyboard on hand. Now, this is where all the magic happens. You're going to want to open up the game script application on your console. And over at the console, do keep in mind that this is going to be a little tricky to navigate here. I still haven't fully figured this out with the controller here, but essentially you're going to want to bring up the keyboard and have it focused right here. So you might have to press a few buttons. I was able to do this by highlighting this and hitting the Y button, but when the keyboard comes up, just press the B button to bring it back down. But make sure the cursor is focused and it is loaded up like this. It should look exactly like this right now. Then once you're ready, you're going to want to hook up your Raspberry Pi Pico to a USB port on your console. Go ahead, hook it up, and wait a few seconds. It should start flashing, and as long as we wait, there we go. 
check this out. It is now doing the exact same thing and emulating a keyboard on your console. So this is a bit of a long script. It's a few hundred lines. So you're just going to want to wait for this until it is done. There's nothing else to do right here but it is going to take some time. Just wait a few minutes for this to type up. Some people might also be wondering, do I really have to use a rubber ducky for this? Well, I'm showing you right here. The other alternative to using a rubber ducky is, well, just typing this all by hand. But I'm pretty sure most, if not everyone, does not want to do this here. If you feel like following along with your script as well, you could always open up that Payload DD in a text editor on your computer, and you could see where the script is at and search for it just doing a Control F. But you can kind of see at that point the progress to see which line that script is on. All right, so it is getting close to the end here, but I have jumped ahead a little bit. So far, it's taken, I've noticed with this, it takes maybe four four or five minutes. It's within five minutes this should be done typing here. And there we go. Once we are at the end, it should stop. So at this point, once it's stopped, go ahead and physically disconnect your Raspberry Pi Pico from the console. I would at this point now recommend hooking up a USB keyboard just because it's going to make this part easier. But once that's connected, you're going to want to go all the way to the top here. Just scroll all the way to the top. And I've noticed this can stop it from working just because there is a comment that should be commented out but is not. If you come right here, I've noticed with this, it might just be the delay itself, but it doesn't seem to type out the original comment of quack quack and it kind of cuts off this at the beginning. So really to fix this, you just need to put two slashes like that and a space. So there we go, this top line has been commented out. So that means this code should now work. That's all we really needed the keyboard for here. You, you could also do this with your controller, but it's just going to be easier to use a USB keyboard. Once that has been fixed up, we can now disconnect our USB keyboard. We now need to actually run this game script. So I'm going to use my controller here and we're at the last steps to get this actually working and to test and see if your firmware is exploitable and if you've done this correctly on here. You're going to want to hold down the left bumper on your controller and tap the X button. It should bring you to the Windows section right here. Come down here and enable Show Code Run Window. This new window will now pop up. Now hold down the left bumper yet again, tap the X button, tap it again to bring up Windows, and go down to Show Console Window. Once those two have been enabled, hold down the left bumper, tap the X button, and make sure code run is coming up. Now once code run is coming up, go down to run code once and tap the A button. The console is now going to act like it is frozen because it is trying to run that script. Just put your controller down and let it do its thing. And here we go, it took about 30 seconds for me, but when the current frame changes to one, you should see leet quite literally pop up in the back. But if you want to verify this, hold down the left bumper, tap the X button, Tap it yet again, tap it again, bring up console, and you should get this right here, shellcode return value leet. And if you're seeing this here, congratulations, you have been able to run this proof of concept kernel exploit on the system itself. That also means that you are on an exploitable firmware. So you should be good to go as long as you are keeping your console offline. You still have access to this application and you're not going to be doing anything else on the system itself. So for anybody who was wondering, what can I do with this right now? How can I show this is working? Is there anything that I can do? Well, so far, at least at the time I'm recording this video, this is what you can do. If you are interested in carrot cake, not just the food, but the actual actual author of this script here and the person who has really been working on this vulnerability and such, well, you can follow them on Twitter for more details and more updates in regards to this here. As you can see, she had just said that the kernel vulnerability was fixed from Microsoft and they are still tweeting about this here. So if you're wanting more information directly from the source, she would be the one to follow. Either way, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped out, hopefully it was entertaining, and hopefully it was well leet. I told you all at the beginning, I mean, if you were wanting to see something super epic right here, it was going to be leaked, but this is all you were going to be getting. <laughs> Either way, that is about it for this video, for real. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.